Thanks everybody for attending. Uh, my name is Rachel Young and you'll also see Rachel O'Donnell here with me. We're from M Agency. Um, we're hosting the webinar this evening. So a um, couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we'll be taking questions and answers at the end of the presentation. So if you have those, please use the Q&A feature for that. So chat for technical challenges, Q&A for questions and answers. All right, thanks everybody. I am going to hand it over to Walt. Well, hello everyone, thank you for, for tuning in tonight. We're very excited to have uh, Lisa speak about weeds tonight. And But before we do that, I just wanna introduce you to a few folks and kind of tell you about why we do this. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Todd Smith from the uh, City of University Place. Todd uh, does the surface, what they call the surface water program for University Place. And that's any water that runs off the surface. He's uh, concerned that only rain goes down the drain. So we definitely want to have uh, little to no chemicals coming off of yards. And that's why we're doing this uh, tonight. And also that's why the health department's involved with it too, because uh, chemicals are of course pesticides and herbicides and fertilizers or can be damaging to our streams, lakes, Puget Sound, our groundwater. So that's, that's uh, why really why, we, why we're here tonight. And also I'd like to introduce to you Tina Friedrich. Tina's with the uh, Tacoma Pierce County Health Department and she runs a program called TAPSWISE, which is a program about lake, lake taps, now trying to keep uh, lake taps water clean. Uh, we all love lake taps and we wanna keep it, keep it good and, and crystal clear and not have a lot of chemicals run into it too. And okay, so we've already uh, we've already met uh, Rachel and Rachel, the two Rachels from uh, the um, M agency. And so uh, I just want to mention a little bit about the program that I, that Tina and I are involved in. It's called Natural Yard Care. And what it is is we're just trying to like say encourage people to use less chemicals on their yard so it doesn't run off into streams and lakes and the sound. So uh, just th be thinking about how you can control weeds and fertilize without using a lot of harmful chemicals. I also am involved in a program called Dirt Alert, and that's uh, arsenic and lead in yards that's left over from the old smelter. We had a smelter here in Tacoma up by uh, Point Defiance Park in the little town of Ruston, smelted copper for almost a hundred years. And in, the cop in that process, uh, it's the smoke that came out of the smokestack had arsenic and lead in it, and it's on the ground, and there's still on the yards today in Tacoma, University Place, Fircrest, Lakewood, and Silicon. And uh, we do a free soil test. If you'd like to have your soil tested or if you try to contact us, you could, um, we can look up to see if your soil has been tested already. So that's a, a program that we do. And then I'd also like to mention again that next week, Lad Smith is a professional landscaper is gonna be here to talk about how to go natural on your yard and use only natural uh, fertilizers and natural ways to control weeds on your yard. And it'll, it will definitely uh, dovetail with um, Liesl's talk today. So with that, I'd like to introduce our speaker. I'd like to introduce uh, Liesl Zappler and uh, just let you know that Liesl is a horticulture consultant and a leader in sustainable landscaping. Uh, she's a formerly a landscape uh, coordinator with the Swedish Hospital in Seattle, and she was also the head groundskeeper for the Lake Washington Technical Institute. She's been a gardener for the Seattle uh, School District and currently works on a farm, a uh, flower farm in Yakima, which has got to be a beautiful place over there. And uh, Liesl and I have something in common. We both grew up on 40 acres of ground somewhere. I was in Wisconsin. I think you were back east somewhere. <laughs> so that's just <laughs> yep. <I> that. New York. <laughs> so we're excited to have you here, Lisa. Go ahead and take it away and uh it hands okay. on yours. All right. Thank you. So I just I really want to thank um Walt and Tacoma Pierce County Health Department and the other sponsors for doing this because this is um this is a great way to get you to have better practices for your own home garden. So this is, this is kind of what, what your goal is here, is to have your plants filling in your bed. And are there weeds in this picture? I'm sure there are, but um, you're not gonna see it because you've got so much else going on and you've got plants growing up and filling in. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today. 
And Walt is right. I uh, worked for many different entities in Seattle. Um, I was all about working for large public institutions and helping them reduce or eliminate their pesticide use and developing a program with other practices. So UW, Port of Seattle, which is actually all organic for the water, water side part of it. Um, we wrote an integrated pest management with Seattle Public Schools. And the last place I worked was Swedish Medical Center. And in any of those places, you really just don't want to be using pesticides because of your population as well as the community and you're in Puget Sound. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways that you can avoid using pesticides. And Walt is right, I moved to Eastern Washington to be with my farmer boyfriend there, Alan. And uh, so we're over just uh, north of Pasco and it's a fantastic organic farm. And I also started a, a flower farm and turned a grain bin into an inn just cause. So uh, that's what I'm doing now, but it's also given me um, a little bit more of a homeowner perspective of different techniques for, for gardening at home. So I can talk about that to you as well. So you really need to define, uh, define your weeds. What is a weed to you? Uh, I am the child without the doll. That's my sister with the doll. I've got the dandelion and the Queen Anne's lace. So to me, this is where I grew up in upstate New York on 40 acres. And to me, these are not weeds, these are flowers. And that is true to this day. So that's kind of how I look at those. I look at them as wildflowers, not weeds. And Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson, um, a, a weed is a plant whose virtues have not been discovered. This is actually a picture from the UW, it's by Denny Hall. And then look at the woman in back with the pickaxe. They're, they're hand weeding a lawn, and I don't have an exact date on it, but it's definitely early 1900s. And it just, it's really surprising to me that at that point, uh, people were still, uh, interested in getting rid of weeds and lawns. So what is a weed to you? Uh, what if it looks good in front of Mount Rainier? Like that is fireweed right there. It's a beautiful purple flower. So perhaps you would like it in your yard. And in Alaska, it's fantastic. It's even taller than it gets here. It's really beautiful. And then that's my niece, Emily there. What, what if you can make a wish with it? Like how could we go on walks and not be able to make a wish with a dandelion? And then this to me is beautiful. Uh, when I first moved out here, there was uh, a ground nest of three little owl babies so we couldn't mow the yard which was great and then it turned into this which to me is absolutely beautiful but to other people that could very well be your worst nightmare. Um, my grandfather was from Sicily and he cultivated
Let's see. So we have a question about um, red clover or possibly wood sorrel um, okay. in garden beds. Okay, so the, the clover again is a sign of it's fixing nitrogen. So that is a happy thing. Um, so that that's an indicator that there's a low nitrogen. So they can either leave the red clover to fix the nitrogen. And red clover is a very attractive plant. I mean, people do plant that ornamentally as well or for a cover crop. Um, or, I mean, it, it's not that hard to weed out. So using a weeding fork, getting under it and weeding it out and then, you know, planting other plants in there, but keeping in mind there's a low nitrogen level. So fertilizing when you plant um, and then mulching so there's no bare soil areas. And the wood sorrel, um, again, it's going to like a moist area. Uh, so maybe either doing something to shade it out or perhaps working on that moisture if you can, probably can't is my guess. So shading it out with other plants would be the best way. Uh, okay, next question. How to stop deers from eating flowers like lilies? <laughs> deer are, yes. So deer are a definite problem. Um, so there's obviously the deer fence, which is a big deal to put that up. There are lists of plants that are, that deer don't like. And so um, let me just try and think of some resources for you. Um, there's, a, there's, uh, I'm trying to think, of, if you Google deer resistant or plants deer don't like, you will get a big list. There's also some pepper sprays that you can put in the area around the plants. Like I've seen that for, um, it's either a granular or a spray that you can try in those areas. It's supposed to work for deer and coyotes. Um, so, um, Sunset, the, the, there's a book that Sunset Magazine has put out that is just basically a guide, a botanical guide of plants. And in there, there's a list of, of plants that deer just don't like. But deer are hungry critters. So there's a lot of plants they do. They like magnolia. Um, so, and you can also do some fencing uh, or just around the base of trees. Like you can do, um, you know, chicken wire. If you have young trees out, put chicken wire around and really stake them hard and, and tough so that the deer aren't gonna eat your plants. But remember they're part of the community and maybe feeding the deer is okay. Uh, okay, Margo would like to know what is the best mulch for overwintering vegetable gardens? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so you don't, what you don't want to do is incorporate uh, wood chips into the soil because that can take a little bit of nitrogen. Um, so for a bed that you want to keep over the winter, um, you can buy bags of hazelnuts and that's kind of just a nice thing. And those are really easy to get off because they're round and rolly and they don't, um, they don't go into the soil as easily, I think, as the wood chips do. So um, there's a lot of, you can definitely find them in Washington. There's a bunch of hazelnut growers in Oregon that uh, that bag it up, bag up the shells and sell them. So you can buy that as a mulch for pathways or anything else. So I think that, that might be a good one for vegetable beds. Or hay or straw or something like that would be easy too. That's a very cool idea. Uh, Karen would like to know what is the best method for large tree roots? For I'm assuming removing them. Hmm. Okay, you really want to get with an arborist on that because, say, this large tree is by your house and that root is maybe going under your driveway. You need you need to know if you remove that root if you're going to do damage to the tree that can potentially make it hazardous. So you really need to get uh, a certified arborist to come and consult because you don't want to make a mistake in removing a large root from a large tree. That's pretty important. And if you're looking for an arborist, there's a great uh, group called Plant Amnesty and they have an arborist referral line and they also give pruning classes as well. So Plant Amnesty is a, is a great resource too. 
All right. So the last question is from Francesca, and she would like to know if you could please speak about soil solarization. Soil solarization. So um, you can um, put a, a clear white sheet of, of plastic over your soil, um, but I haven't, I haven't always seen this be successful. Some people are doing it to get just kill the weeds in that area, but that doesn't always happen because sometimes the weeds are super happy. It's like a little greenhouse. So um, I'm not really sure the best method to do it because I've seen it, I, I've, I've seen it not quite work as well as people would like. All right. Well, that is all the questions that we have tonight. So uh, I'm going to hand it back to Walt. And uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming and and thank you, Lisa. It was you've got so much information you've given us. It's awesome. <laughs> and I, and I'm going to apply some of these things right away. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks so much. It's great to have you on. Right. And. Uh, so thank you. And, and thanks to our, our panel, too, and for our sponsors, the uh, City of University Place and Cascade Water Alliance for putting these. And then to just remind you, of course, next week is Lad Smith, and he'll be uh, here at 7 o'clock next Tuesday, which is the 4th of uh, May already. And uh, he's going to talk about going natural on your lawn, which will tie in really nice with your talk. Lisa, thank Great. you so much. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, everybody.